just just a filler because I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do from one week to the next. Because we're live, hi Facebook. Okay, you're live. Are we? Yep, you're yeah. live. Yeah. Well, right on, everybody. Um, hey, welcome to uh, Native Wellness Power Hour. Uh, we're on week twenty-four. Week twenty-four. You believe that? Holy. Anyways, um, this year is sponsored by the Urban Indian Health Institute with the Seattle Indian uh, Health Board. Park. You know, okay. and and, uh, and oh, we got a uh, um, some background noise there too. And so, anyways, this is the Native Wellness Institute. Uh, when the pandemic went in, we, this was just our solution or our response to to. Um, to health and wellness. You know, we only thought that we were only gonna go for like maybe a couple months, but here we are on week 24. And um, again, my name is Gene Tagaban. I'm of the Duck Dame Tan, Raven Freshwater Sockeye Clan from Huna, Alaska, Tataba Wishkitan, Eagle Shark Clan from Juan in Juno. And I'm Cherokee Clinket in Filipino, I'm Cherokee Clinkapino. And it's uh, again, good to be here with everybody. Uh, I'm coming to you right now from the land of the Coast Salish, the, the Puyallup people down here in Ruston, Washington. And I have some guests on here and I'll let them uh, introduce themselves as, as we get started here. Uh, Doug, why don't you go for it, brother? Hey, my name is Doug Kester and I am on the Takuquan people's lands, or well, in the Aquan people's in Juneau, Alaska. Amazing, beautiful place. I hope you can all make it here. My ancestry um, resides from, from Europe, actually, from Germany, and they also were um, subsistence people who had connections with the raven, which um, I feel like I do really have a connection with the raven here because we have some that come every day that I hang out with and talk. So um, I just want to send some good vibes and love out to all the people listening. Thank you so much. And I'm deeply honored to be a part of this. So thanks for being here. Right on. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Naya, I would like to introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, hi, everyone. So my name is Naya Indira Raimundo, and I live and work here on Denina land. Um, I lived in Anchorage, Alaska for a little over a year now. So not quite Alaskan just yet, but I'm getting there. Um, I am the daughter of um, my parents who are from Trinidad and Tobago and my mother being from Guyana. So black and Indian heritage. So yeah, I'm just really thankful to be here and for the opportunity to ask these guys some questions. Right on, thank you. And so what we're doing today is um, up in uh, Alaska, uh, every Tuesday night, we're part of a uh, Alaska men's support group where we have a, a group of men, um, small group of men actually, and we just come together uh, just to just uh, to support each other, just to throw out ideas. And it was put together by the, with the Alaska Network on Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault as a way to end the violence and the sexual assault and the hurt and harm uh, uh, in Alaska with, our, our, with women and our brothers, sisters, uh, and relatives of the LGBTQ communities there. And, and again, just to, how, how can we bring healing and facilitate healing in, in Alaska? Um, and Doug is part of that. And hopefully later on, we'll have another Doug, uh, our elder Doug Modig, you know, and unfortunately our brother Johan was supposed to join us. He couldn't join us, but we have Naya here. And she pops in every once in a while and has been asking us questions, you know, and, and sharing her, her, uh, or her thoughts and, and background just to um, find out it, uh, about how to work with men and, you know, the healing of men. And, and with that, we're even trying to figure that ourselves. So we invited her on to uh, ask, actually facilitate and ask some questions of us. And so um, we're gonna do whatever we can again. Men, we need to get involved. I'm addressing all the men out there right now. Men, we have to get involved uh, to stop the violence, the abuse, the hurt and harm out there in Indian country, out there in, in, in this land of all peoples, you know, and with, with women. I know um, uh, I want to uh, really acknowledge my brother, Mike Duncan, who's down there in California, who has a men's group down there as well, and is doing, doing a lot of work. And, and it's about men. We, got, we have to step up. And so I'm, I'm doing a call out to our men, 
you know, and I'm calling out to, man, we also have to make a step up and get involved with the uh, missing and murdered indigenous women and the girls and our relatives there too. Um, you know, and, and that's always been an issue is like with men getting involved. We've got to like mentor our young boys and so that they grow up to be, be uh, healthy men in, in this uh, journey. And so with that, I just want to turn it over to, um, to Naya right now, you know, and, and just to tell us a little bit more of your work and start asking us questions. You know, again, we're going to do the best we can. This whole process is about us learning as well. You know, if there's, a, if I don't have an answer to it, um, I will, I'll try to find that answer as well. You know, and, uh, and, and so awesome. Naya, right on. Thanks for being here, first of all. Yeah, thanks for having me. And um, just having the opportunity as a woman to sort of pick men's brains is very rare. So I'm really excited. Um, my first question, I think we should start off. Um, first, we have to address the elephant in the room. So man vision, what is your definition? <laughs> <laughs> and is there a cure for this condition? Oh, my God. Okay, okay. <laughs> we just had this discussion the other day about man vision. It is it's so really, real. It's, you know, it's like, because, you know, I, I, I walk this world, man, and I just had to fill this filter of, of man vision. And part of it, too, I was talking about with my wife, you know, and I got to give a shout out to my wife because she helps me in so many ways. But we'll be driving down the road, and then suddenly I'll see a sign to the side of the road or something, you know, and I'll go, how long has that sign been there? And, and she'll go, are you serious? You're, as, you're asking me that question? I go, yeah, how long, is, when did that sign get here? And she goes, that sign has been here for the last two years and you're just noticing it. <laughs> we can be driving down the road and suddenly I'll look up into the sky and I'll see a hawk. I'll go, hey, check out that hawk. It's missing a tail feather. Oh, it's like, that's a male hawk. Oh, it's only two years old right there. Holy, oh, there's a little hummingbird that just flew. So my mad vision is I'll notice I have select vision. I have select vision on what I want to see. And mind you all see those things and you know, and so I walk in this world with that man vision. And my man vision is a filter. And my filter is is belief systems. My filter is, you know, um, of values of um, of those, whatever those things my man filter has. You know, and so sometimes it's like, instead of like seeing through the forest, like my, seeing through my fingers, I'm just looking at the hand that's right in front of me. And sometimes I don't even look at the elephant in the room that's right there in front of me. And I'm looking past these things, you know, and that's, that's, a, that's, that's an issue that I've had with my wife too. It's like, uh, she's like going, I'm not even addressing these things, but I'm looking past it, you know? And, and, and at the same time, my man vision is part of, um, I have blind spots. I have blind spots. And I have my, as even as a native man, as a person of color, I have my blind spots where I have my prejudices. You know, I have my discriminations and my judgments about things. And so what my I have to do with my man vision is I, I need to have an open mind and an open vision about possibility and, and acknowledge that I have blind spots. And thank goodness that I have my wife, I have my support system, I have people, you know, a great question, Naya, just to, so that I can uh, be aware of these things, because I do, I have, I have man vision, man. And I have not only that too, but I have man hearing. <laughs> That's for sure. I have man hearing, you know. I can go on. Doug, what are your thoughts, brother? Oh my gosh. I, you know, it's funny, because um, at first I was like, oh, this is a cool, like, joke question, but I've been thinking deep about this and it is like a real thing for me. I, first of all, <clears throat> when I go to like the grocery store, I do a lot of the shopping in our house. So when I go to the grocery store, I can never find anything. I'm just like looking, hey, excuse me. Hey boys. Sorry, I got two little boys that are like screaming in the background. <laughs> Uh, and, and I can't find anything. And she's always like, oh, it's right there. Can't you find there? Where's this stuff? And I realize part of it is because I have resentment. I have this like weird resentment about me having to go, having to, go to the shopping, which I actually kind of enjoy. 
but and it's like this blinder that goes on me and it's the same thing when she's like hey grab this out of the fridge i'm like i can't find this thing like immediately this like tidal wave of emotion comes up and i i realize i mean she calls me on it all the time so i realized it really is like a part of myself like a part of my masculinity that is holding me back and just like you said gene with the blinders and all that i mean i i have the same same stuff i mean i'm every day i'm working on my my own personal prejudices and like observing my thoughts i'm like here i you know thought i wasn't you know prejudiced but some part of me some part of my white privilege is is in there is inside me and i as much as I, I don't want to be that person. It's like a, it's like a, you know, programming or something that I'm trying to overcome on, on on a daily basis. So yeah, my wife will tell me I am. We have toddler vision in our house too, which uh, I hear going on over there right now. So uh, yeah, just guys or or men, we all have it. And mansplaining, man. Oh yeah, I I try not to do that. Don't do yeah, that. Yeah, but I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so good yeah. first question Naya. yeah of course um so i do want to um talk about how some of the work i do as you both know i do work teaching boys and men positive masculinity and gender equality um and i sort of realized with this job it, it's hard to be a man and i don't think that thought would have ever occurred to me had i not um you know, been learning and communicating with the men here in this community. So um, do you agree with that statement? And if so, what's the hardest thing about being a man? Um, you know what? Uh, it, yes, I, I, I agree with it. Yes and no, as far as I, is it hard to be a man? And is it hard to be, you know, the, the, no part is of just of going out there and, and what doing man things, build helping out doing the yard work, you know, doing these things, taking out the trash, and I mean there's there's those things. Um, but the uh, but the tough part I want to bring up is is what I'm thinking about right now that came to my mind was this man box, and I don't know how many people are aware of this man box. And out there in society, there's so many stereotypes of what men are supposed to do. You just watch TV, you just watch the uh, the media, that we're supposed to be macho, we're supposed to be um, tough, we're supposed to be uh, hunters or athletes or or talk a certain way, uh, working out, eating eating all meat or whatever it is, you know. And um, so there's this man box and. Um, so to be a man and fit into that man box, what society has and media has for men out there in the world, it's impossible. It's impossible. I don't fit into that box and I'm not even gonna try to fit into that box. Um, you know, and to be, is it, and the hard part about being a man is um, living up to that man box, but even, uh, you know, I just want to bring out as a native man, you know, the colonization and, uh, uh, and the assimilation. What are, you know, being a native man, learning my native ways, being that honorable man, being that uh, respectful man, traditional spiritual man. Um, that's always, you know, learning, learning. Um, and I want to be a good man. I want to be a good man, but oftentimes I grew up with, again, those prejudices. You know, you see man vision. I grew up with uncles, my dad, uh, you know, and those men in my life who passed a lot of these behaviors and beliefs onto me. And so I need to bring, I need to use my filters Know, my positive filters, my wellness filters, my health filters, you know, and influential, good, you know, good influential filters in and, and bring that in, you know, and, and so is it, is it, it's, yes, it's easy and it is tough being a man, you know, again, what do I say? How do I say it? What's right? 
you know, and, and addressing with women or our uh, LGBTQ communities, you know, and, and, and so I'm learning, I'm learning on that. You know, that's a great question. That's a great question. Doug, Doug, what do you have to say? Oh, it, you know, I mean, just like you said, it's, yes, we all have like our man privilege and that is like a real ass thing. Like we, you know, we just carry it and it's kind of a weight in some ways, but we kind of use it too all the time. So yes, it's hard, but yes, we do have a lot of privilege. So I want to throw that out first. Um, but these days, like for men, I think about this all the time, like it's hard because everything's changing, you know, and that man box is like, feels like it's closing in on us. And we're like, oh, you know, and it's, and we don't know, like so many men don't know where to go because their heart tells them one thing. And then this man box tells them another thing. And it's like this conflict. And, and also our own, you know, programming, like you were saying, Gene, when we were growing up, it's like we have our uncles and we have teachers and we have like my football coaches, like I look back at the stuff they used to say and like do and and I mean it's it's horrible quite 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 honestly I mean the degrading things that have been said by coaches in my life I look back I'm like oh my gosh yeah and it's it's always with us now like we carry all that with us so when you look out on the world and be like it's it's constantly there so you constantly have to like overcome that that stuff that's inside of us and be like wait that's not how i really feel what is my heart telling me and you're always having to go in and like check and and feel what feels right and just that said is men can be detached from their feelings and sometimes that's a great thing when you're hunting when maybe you're whatever at war or something, it's a powerful thing to be able to detach. But in real life, when you're just like at home with your kids and your wife, it doesn't doesn't work out usually that well to um, just be detached and allow that man box programming to just like come out. Like even right now, the second. I hear my like kids playing this video game and they're they're like making some racket and yelling and arguing and, and I honestly want to go over there and be like, you guys, what are you doing? I'm I'm on this important meeting <laughs> and yell at them. But then also my heart is like they're just little little beans, you know. They have no idea what's going on. So I, it's just an example of this constant struggle that I in conflict I feel internally a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I mean, there's like, I learned a lot of these things when I was young and they just stay, they stay with me. They're imprinted in, in, within me, you know? And I was like thinking about, um, I was reading these here uh, comments on here, a brother was saying about the man box on the res or out in the villages, you know? And that man box is out in this colonized Western society that that's what we're supposed to fit. That's, that's, um, that's where, how we're supposed to fit in there, into that. But out on the res or out in the village, you know, and, um, you know, as far as being a native man, you know, that's uh, uh, how do we fit into that circle? Yeah. Oftentimes it's like, we, we have all the values in there. We want to be in there, but on the outside, you know, is, 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 is Western society colonization that, that's there. So we're fighting to be in the circle, within the circle, instead of the box. You know, interesting. I mean, you got me really thinking about that now. Yeah, thanks, Naya. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm just going to keep drilling you keep both. Keep drilling us. Yeah, I'm going to keep your, <laughs> picking your brains. Um, we, Doug, you mentioned um, detached emotions and how sometimes that can be a good thing and a valuable thing. Um, but I do want to touch on vulnerability because that can be something that can be powerful. But with men, I feel they have a harder time showing um you know those emotions that they're socialized to sort of hide away so do you as men feel that vulnerability is something that should be normalized go for it brother oh well oh yes 
yes, it should be normalized if it feels right for you at, at, at any moment in time. Well, it's, it's like this, it's like this. It's like to be vulnerable doesn't mean we're just spilling out every you know, weakness or feeling that, that we might have. It actually is like a courageous action. It's like a step up. It's like a step into this, this whole other like way of being. And yes, it's exposing parts of ourselves. But those parts are sometimes, sometimes it's the ones that need to be healed. It's, the, it's those parts of ourselves that are afraid and that are hurt because we're hurting we're hurting as, as men. So many of us men are hurting. And just pushing that away, that hurt and that pain and that stuff doesn't help, man. It just comes up. It comes back in a different way. And sometimes it roars up behind us as like anger or, and, and, um, and anger is okay too. But it's when you use that anger to hurt someone is when it's wrong. And so vulnerability can be super powerful. And I'm not saying we all have to like walk around like crying at the grocery store because I can't freaking find the buttermilk or whatever. But it's just, it's, it's when you have to dive deep and really connect with someone, connect with your partner, connect with your father, connect with, you know, anyone. It, that is when vulnerability can be powerful and it can be more powerful than anger or even those like other, you know, attributes that, that men carry. Right on, man. You know, I like that. Just that what a false um, belief that vulnerability is that we're going to just, just start crying at, you know, for the buttermilk at the store. What a, what a, <laughs> what a limiting belief that, that out there society has, you know, and men, I've talked to many of my men and, and brothers, you know, who have that belief. You know, I grew up with uh, that, that thing with my dad told me men don't cry. You know, don't cry. You know, as as powerful women in my life, they said it's okay to express uh, emotion through tears, through tears, and that's that's what I learned. So we have this thing with the Native Wellness Institute. It's it's about um, taking a healthy risk, and in order to take a healthy risk, um, to take that risk, uh, we need to be vulnerable. There's a vulnerability, and have courage to change, have courage to grow, and in order to have courage. Uh, it takes us to be vulnerable and to either, either grow. It takes us to, to acknowledge and, and that vulnerability as, as human beings, as human beings, you know? And sure, again, my man vision, have my filters, have my walls, have my, my issues, my things that I'm working on and things like that. And, um, you know, and, and we, even when people bring up blind spots that I have that I haven't really taken a look at it. It's like, it's to, to take a look at that, I'm really being vulnerable. So uh, being, you know, and I'm not saying be comfortable, but with your vulnerability, but it is about forming a relationship with it and acknowledging it and, you know, and tapping into that vulnerability. And, and again, I'll, I'll tell you one thing with my wife, um, Ruby, I mean, she taps into a lot of my, my vulnerabilities and things that I have to you know, take a look at. That, that I'm that scared the heck out of me that 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 uh, have to and my my character of who I am and values of who I am and those, those, and those things and you know and oftentimes I I block those because I'm like oh man I'm not ready I'm not ready I'm not ready and what what the heck what you know what is this what is this I don't I don't know and you know and then later on I have to take step back and take a look at that and, and have that internal conversation with myself and even have that have that conversation with myself is a sense of, of vulnerability as well. You know, I think it's a healthy thing. I think it's a, a totally healthy thing to be uh, vulnerable. You know, and it doesn't make us weak. You know, but we grow. It's one of the things. So, uh, what kind of what kind of elder do we want to be as we age? Because one day I'm going to be there. I wouldn't be there. And so, um, yeah, vulnerability. I, I want to say one more thing on that too, because it just is passing through me like right now. When you know when something happens, and you're for men, I don't I don't know how it is for women, but like your first reaction can be pretty intense. Like I can feel anger, I can feel the frustration, and I'd be like, oh, I got. But if you can sit with that 
just for a little bit. I mean, it could be seconds. It could be minutes. If you can just sit with it for a second, it it starts to transform and you go a little deeper. And that's a big part of vulnerability to me. It's like opening up that first, the first feelings, and then you open it up and you go inside of that and it, and it gets deeper. And then that's where you see, like a lot of times my anger can turn into grief. I realize it's that anger is keeping that grief down. So I don't feel it. And um, anyway, I just have that feeling. So so one of the things I want to acknowledge very quick here on um, a brother here is on the chat and he says, uh, that's been one of, the, one of my biggest obstacles in my healing journey. You know, what a, what a acknowledgement and an insight to, we, we can't change what we don't acknowledge. Okay, um, I have a few more. Uh, most men are good men who don't go around abusing and mistreating others. But sadly, there are some who do, um, you know, just mistreat or abuse others. So um, just as men, how do you feel about violence against women? My feeling of violence against women is that it, has, it, it needs to stop. It needs to change. And it, it just, it just, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. And that we need to value our, our women and um, our life givers. Uh, and, you know, and it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I've been doing this work now and, and uh, with men, men, uh, masculinity, uh, our male engagement uh, for healing men, you know, with the Native Wellness Institute as well to, to really address these things because it's, it's a pandemic itself. Violence against women and violence against others by men is a pandemic in itself. The greatest threat to women are men. And I'm going to say that again. The greatest threat to women and the wellness of women are men. And it's not only the violence. Oftentimes we think violence and abuse against women is physical abuse. But the mental abuse that's, that's associated with it, the emotional abuse and the spiritual abuse you can abuse somebody and, and without even laying a hand on them, just through your words, just through your energy, just through your own personal emotions, just that abuse. And this whole system, this um, patriarchy of that's the, the that's called this 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 leadership system that's that's out there, uh, colonization, assimilation, because is is out there is all you know men, man unhealthy men making up these rules of how we're supposed to be and everyone's supposed to follow it and such you know and so the uh, men yeah it and uh, and to be really honest with you uh the abuse of women by men it really just pisses me off it angers me and it's an anger that yes it's an anger that 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 motivates me it's a motivating anger. I can't let that anger eat me up. I can't let that anger, you know, just take me over because it is, it's an energy. And sometimes when it does, I have to go, I, that's what I need to know. I need to go for a walk. I need to go for a bike ride. I need to like channel this anger somehow. Cause I, sometimes I see things that just really just pisses me off, especially men who abuse children. Um, I mean, it's like, so men, we have to heal up you have to like step up, you know, and, you know, and so that's, uh, I can go on and on, but I'll, I'll turn over to my brother. Oh, you know, the first thing that honestly comes to mind is, um, is Mother Earth. Our violence towards Mother Earth, that's where, that's where it starts in some ways, like our disrespect for uh, this beautiful, beautiful being of a planet that we live on. And from there, it goes down. And we, the, I mean, I don't believe that it's always been this way in our cultures on planet Earth. I don't believe we've always, you know, been destructive towards the Earth or towards women. It is, it is happening now. And it's, there's a reason why it's in our face right now. Like, this is what we're dealing with. Because obviously, it's wrong and it's totally imbalanced. And I've been lucky enough to be all over the world and um, live in Africa for a couple of years. And 
quite honestly, it's happening there too. And it's it's like Gene was saying that that patriarchy, that that privilege, that like part of ourselves, and also our our elder Doug Modig says this. It's because men believe it's okay. And I've been I've been playing that in my head. I'm like, what do I believe? Do I and you really have to get down to your roots. You might say like, oh, I, I don't believe that's a good thing. No, I, I wouldn't believe that. But somewhere inside, men do believe that it's okay because they're doing it. So we need to, we need to transform that, that belief that it's okay to hurt women. Where did that come from? I don't know. It, I mean, maybe, maybe it's a, an aspect of ourselves. Like it's kind of like a, pandemic or you know that's happening that has happened for thousands of years on on this planet i know my culture my european culture has that so maybe that's where it came from maybe maybe it's our disease that that we brought on the world because they've been doing it for a long time but even if the farther back you go i feel like the more women are honored as as equals so I'm, I'm for going back in time and bringing those aspects of ourselves back forward and being like, when were we more balanced? And let's, let's figure this out because we haven't always been this messed up and we're, we're seriously messed up in that regard. I mean, it's, it's time to bring us together as equals, those, those energies. And it's not just... It's the feminine, uh, for me, we all have feminine, masculine aspects. And as men, sometimes they push down that feminine aspect inside of them even. So it, we're, it, it, we beat up the, ourselves <laughs> in some ways that, are, that, that like can be the, anyway, I just, yes, it has to stop, period. That's, and we have to show up. Men have to show up. You don't have to know what to do. You don't have to know anything. Just show up and be like, I'm here. You, I'm here with you. I'm standing with you. I don't have it all figured out. I just want to show up and be there and be like, I, I want to stop. I, I want people to stop hurting people in this way. Yeah. Right on. I mean, we do have to show up, but we have to like, um, you know, be willing to like learn and, um, and be accountable. I mean, uh, not only to so my 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 own growth and and how I can do be things, but but we need to speak up. I mean, even I have family members who I need to speak up against it, you know, and uh, and do that thing. But yeah, I mean, it really pisses me off. So it motivates me. Yeah. Um, so with that, I know we touched on, um, this, the last time we all spoke in our men's, uh, support group, but, um, you know, just the men who do mess up, you know, who do abuse or mistreat someone, but, you know, make that change or want to make that change to do good, to seek atonement or redemption and, you know, the question just is, how can men regain that honor um, when they do want to be better men? Yeah, and that's, a, um, you know, for instance, there's, there's men out here who have abused or who have uh, perpetrated, who have uh, uh, been involved with domestic violence and stuff, you know, but how, how can we get regain that honor and, and, and stuff? And I like, I really like what Doug had to say, our elder, and I, I wish he was on here to really talk about that. Um, that, you know, and he talked about, it's about doing, doing the right thing. If you want to be, if you want to grow, you want to be healthy, you want to uh, um, go out there and, and stop this yourself, it's about being present. Like I said, being present and just doing the right thing and speaking on it. You know what? You will, you're going you're gonna to come out and you will take some heat because the people know who you are. They know what you've done. They will, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get on you. But, um, Take the heat, 
step up, do what's right, you know, and and show it through action that that to regain that honor, you know, because I, I was thinking about that 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 you know what Doug said too is about I like to talk to men about or women about what they can do, but it's it's really, you know, it's not up to them or it's like it's about you, you know, stepping up as men. You know, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. You know, because the women, you know, they, they, you know, they, they have, they have a right to like be pissed too. Because the perpetration that that happened against them is a lifelong. It affects them lifelong. What happens to them affects them through the rest of their life. You know, and it, it, you know, and and so it's like. So men, if you if if you have been a perpetrator, if you have abused in that way, or whatever it is, but you want to make things right, then make it right. You need to step up. You need to start healing. You need to start, you know, um, learning about yourself and um, speaking up on it, speaking up on it, telling your story. Say, this is what I've done. This is who I was. Tell your story. Tell your story. Because there's a lot of women out there who think that men can't change. And I've seen men that, that has changed, that they have changed. They can. And it's, it's a process. And men, we have to heal. We have to heal. You know, so I, I like what Doug said that last time we talked about. It. It's like, men, you know, you just got to do what's right. You know? So uh, I'm still thinking that one over too. That's been mm -hmm. a, a question that I've been asking for a while. Because I think it's different with everyone. Mm. I think it's different with everyone. But I think that the commonalities with it though is that, yeah, I mean, men do what's right, step up. Step up, step up. Take Number the heat. because it's, oh. oh, you go ahead, Gene. No, 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 go for it, brother. I just thinking how hard it is because like <clears throat> me personally, I'm, I'm ready to embrace someone. <laughs> I'm ready to accept someone, you know, and I don't want to kick people. I really feel like connection is the key. So like when you take someone who's done something wrong and say, you're out, you know, you're out of here. I, I, I know how, how like that, that might not help. Maybe they'll spiral down and do worse. But I also know that you have to be accountable for your actions in it. So there's like a, there's like a, you know, a polarization there. Like, how do you hold them accountable, but still not like totally throw them away? And I mean, come on, I've, I've done, you know, bad things. Luckily, you know, nothing terrible, but I still, I, I want to take accountability for my stuff too. And the way I look at it, it's, it's like this, it's like you're, you're, if you're a sword and you like, a sword's like made in a fire, you know, a forge, this heavy heat. And it's maybe that sword's hurt people. So you put it back in the, um, in the forge and it's like that heat that he's talking about, that Gene's talking about, you're going to get it. And it's going to feel hot, you know, you're going to be like part of you is going to burn be, um, from the inside because you're going to realize what you've done and how much you've hurt people. When especially men who've done some bad things. Um, but that there's always hope when that comes out, when that sword comes out and it's pounded again and remade into like something beautiful, that that's a really powerful story that can change lives. So if it's if that's something you've done, and I, I feel like I said, I feel like we've all have some part to play in it, but if you've done some really bad things. I believe that you can reforge yourself and like take the heat, stand and and be there and start standing up and um and you know be the change that that we all that we all need right now. So I I have empathy for for men who who have hurt people, but I also want to hold them accountable 100% because I I feel like it's important and it's an important job for us other men because we can't, the emotional weight of holding each other accountable is really hard. And that's not a job for the women. That's a job for each of us, uh, other men to hold each other accountable. And 
I, I think it's awesome. Like when I connect with my group every Tuesday night, I feel we, we don't tell each other, you know, I mean, we hold each other accountable, but that we don't use that word. But afterwards, I want to step up and I want to be a better person and I want to do what's right because I have this behind. I have my my pack, my other men around me, and I feel like I can be more accountable. And I anyway, it's a really important part for me. If you don't have a, a group of men that you can interact with, find it because connecting with other men is a really important part of this healing. You know, as, as I want to share too, I mean, it's, and again, women have been asking about that and, and, and want us to be accountable, but it's up to us men to like to step up and, and, uh, and be part of that. And sure, we need to teach our kids to, you know, starts, you know, I've been reading some of these posts on these, these chats, you know, and, and really like the conversation that's going on there about just uh, uh, teaching the children and, and work with the children. Um, and how can we bring healing into the schools too, into the schools and, uh, and that part of it as well, so. But just cause you've, uh, that triggered something too. Maybe a ceremony is, could be a really important part of healing as well. And I'm, I think it's a really important, has a really important role to play for us to collectively heal um, and individually heal. So a ceremony could, could really Absolutely. help. Absolutely. heavy stuff um and i want to keep going off of that momentum yeah 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 so um you know i've noticed that people judge people based on their worst mistakes they never really take the time to find out a person's story um what sort of led them to maybe making that decision that they've made whether it be good or bad um so we talk about change we talk about healing um my work with the juvenile justice system and those boys and just hearing their stories um and it's just a lot of them i feel in order to make that change or to regain honor they need to heal but they have no clue how to heal so that's my question how can we teach boys and men <coughs> healing how can we teach boys and men healing you know and uh um yeah, I mean, I like I like what you had, you had to say, Doug, about ceremony. Um, traditionally, our, our native ways, you know, our, or with our native men, you know, or native boys, definitely uh, through ceremony, through our cultures, through our traditions, you know. And but part of it too is being that model, being that model for them, you know, and um, so that they see it, that they see it, and not just speak words, but but live in it. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of people, they just, you know, they, they spew words out there and then they go off and live a totally different, different way, different life. But um, we need to mentor them. We need to mentor them. You know, sure, there's the traditional ways, the ceremonies and such like that. But even uh, we have Brother Robert jo uh, Johnston, on, who's uh, part of the Native Wellness Institute, is a coach, is a basketball coach. And he just goes out there and he even brings the traditions into the coaching themselves uh, of basketball. So that we need, you know, there's, there's those things as well. Um, and, it, and, and into the schools of being involved. I have, I'm a huge advocate of, as far as like getting, doing dirt time. When I say dirt time, getting, getting uh, people outside, getting them outside, introducing them to, to the land, to, to the environment to the mountains, the dirt, the trees, forming a relationship with that, with them in that area as well. Um, and so uh, doing, getting some dirt time, you know, and, and taking them out there and, and teaching them in that way as well. Um, yeah, I mean, as we go on, on with this too is, is uh, you know, Doug, what are your thoughts on that? Because you're going to spew up some some uh, some more stuff for me too. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I you know well for one, healing is like it's such a personal journey, and so it's, we have to honor that. You can't force people to heal in one way or another. Um, but there also has to be opportunities. There they have to have opportunities to heal. They have to have. We need to have, you know, events, things that they can do and go to and and people they can reach out to. But 
for me, I mean, I get so much healing just in nature because nature is like one of those things, you know, like you go out, a rock, a rock's not gonna like, you know, like you, you can, you have all this like self pity and anger and that kind of stuff. I feel like trees and rocks and just the earth herself, like she gives you a message and, and the message in some ways is like, oh, you know, that's just your stuff. Like, I'm not gonna reflect that back. So you end up just getting your stuff back at you. And there's like such a beautiful purity to it that you start to, you start to unfold. And that's what I've seen when I've taken young people out in, into the wilderness. Yeah, it's, there's always tears and it's always a little traumatic at first. And then you start to unfold into a world. Like I tell my boys, nature's real. Like all your other stuff of these games and this, you know, this whole other, you know, stuff we do inside is not exactly real for me. Like nature is real. And if we can get back to that core element of like, what is real? What is true? What is authentic? What is like, honestly, you know, a, a part of our, our world. That's, that's it for me is nature. So right on, man, you know, and I just, Naya, I just want to like, uh, just acknowledge the work that you do and you're doing this, this work with these young boys and, and this detention center. And um, uh, one of the things they had a study on resiliency um, and that we're not really born with resiliency, you know, it's, you know, we have that spirit and all that, but resiliency is developed by uh, having just one influential person, positive influential person in your life. Mm. And so your, your, your work with these young, young boys who have, you know, and a lot of our people who have had trauma, huge trauma in their lives. And that's why they're in these detention centers, you know, and, and that. Um, so how is it that uh, you know, these, these, for instance, at that level, sure we have the level of the schools, at home, these kids, but even at the level of these here kids, and these boys who are in these detention centers, you know, um, so that they're, they're not repeat offenders, you know. And part of that resiliency is like having that one positive human influence in their lives. And in my journey, in my path, how can I be that? How can I be that? And that is me doing my homework. Like my elder says, not enough people doing their homework this our home, we got to do our homework. So that's about me doing my homework because when that opportunity comes to be that influential person, I need to be ready. So part of it too is like, how am I preparing myself now? So when that opportunity arises that I'm present to it, that I'm present to it. You know, and so that's that, that's just about me stepping up to that as well. You know, and so um, and uh, and totally being open and open to healing, um, and finding out and learning more ways myself about healing, what it is, so that I can I can pass it on. Because again, I have my blind spots, I have my man vision, man hearing, and stuff like that. I need to break down these 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 walls of myself, these filters, take a look at these things and learn. And, um, and that's about assisting others to be able to see, the, see what they have. Because I don't have the power to heal anyone, but I have the power to wake up something in them. I have the, the not the, even that power, I have the possibility to wake something up within them. I have that. You know, and that's what I really what healing I think is, is like waking up that, that strength, the inner strength, that resiliency that you have within yourself. You know, and, and with these, with our men, because we're so influenced by so many things that is, has been in place for hundreds of years. Mm. But our DNA knows, and I totally believe our DNA is connected and our DNA knows how we tap into that. Yeah, I, I just gotta jump on that really quick because um, when you say DNA and I, I just think about our ancestors and um, 
that's a big part of my healing journey for me is is feeling my my ancestors around me and knowing that they're there on this journey with me and i i really feel like yeah there's individual healing but we've all been through some collective drama i mean i i don't know of hardly anyone any culture that hasn't gone through i mean the earth is a pretty intense place to be i mean there's some stuff going on as we all know and our cultures have all felt it and been through it and we need to heal together and i, I feel like the ancestors are with us on that path and we're i'm ready to embrace them more and and that's that's part of the healing so i want i want to, I want to acknowledge this too it's like okay we got doug here you know out there <laughs> the viewers who are out there yeah, and uh we got this here, you know, this white guy, you know, comes on and stuff, you know, and when he first came on and we started talking about ancestry, ancestors, you know, and his is now, you know, I just want to acknowledge, Doug, I mean, how freely you talk about ancestors now, as opposed to when we first met, you know, and I, I really truly believe that's, that's part of that healing as well about connecting with that, those, those ancestors not only just because I'm native, but just because I'm a human being, you know? And you might have, you might be white skin or society calls you as white, but still you have ancestry, you have that heritage, you know? And, you know, and so it's like, uh, here we got this, we're, we're on a native wellness program, we're, you know, we're native wellness power hour, we're native people, we, we ancestors are, are, we talk about that all the time. And we got this white guy who's on here talking about <laughs> ancestors and his ancestry, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I, that shows me the power of the possibility. And I have other, you know, white brothers out there, you know, who are out there doing the same thing, you know, really acknowledging and stepping in and, and finding out about their ancestries. And I, it's so true. And Gene, you have helped guided me so much on, on my path with my ancestors. And, and now I just tell people all the time, I'm like, for me, like the more I embraced it and focused on my ancestors, the more I grew, like my light, my spirit grew. And it's like I deepened more like into my complete self. And um, yeah, I just I can't emphasize it enough how, how beautiful and important it is. Right on. So anyway, Naya, you better keep going with or we'll just yeah. keep going on and on, man. <laughs> oh, we're running a little low on time and I just have so much more, but I have this like burning question that I've always wondered, like as a woman, since having this opportunity to ask you both as men. Um, so, you know, I have female friends and we're very affectionate, complimentary. Oh, you look great. Or, you know, hugs and things like that. But um, if guys do it, it's usually like they say no homo for some reason, they feel this need to say that, or it's when they get um just really drunk and then they're just <laughs> all over each other at that point you know i love you man oh have you been working out and squeezing muscles and things like that so it's like why is that affection um you know just pushed away unless you're inebriated and at that point it's acceptable um yeah i just i think that's really sad that it takes that to show that but yeah well you know i i totally hear you you know Johan, our brother, who couldn't make it on here, um, he says as soon as this pandemic is is clear, we there's a vaccine, and we all see each other because we've gotten re one thing about this is with the Zoom, we've gotten really close and and we can see each other. He says, first thing I'm gonna do with you brothers is come up to you, give us big, huge bear hug, lift you up, you know, <laughs> and just like just say I love you, man, you know, and. Um, but that's one of the thing, one of the things that we're within with our support group with of men that when you talked about vulnerability earlier, we've talked about vulnerability. We've shared tears with each other. We've shared the, those things with each other, you know. And so um, us talking about these things to us, it's it's no, you know, we're looking forward to be able to you know give each other a hug, you know, and just like say I love you, man. You know, totally sober, totally sober you know, without the, the, those influences and things like that. Um, I just want to share really quick here. My, I have an uncle and it was a long time. There was a, a long time between um, a time span before I saw him. And then when he came and finally, you know, we saw him, he came up to Alaska and 
and back to me. And then I went to go give him a hug and he just totally like basically put his hands up you know, to push me off. Says, no, 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 we don't need to do that. And it just got to a point, I, you know, and that's my uncle, my dad's dad, my dad's brother. So I knew where exactly he was coming from, where he got it. And he grew up with that. Men don't show that affection. Men don't show that, that, that mm-hmm. things that to other men. And that if you did even show that to other men, they, you know, that ho- there's homophobic, uh, you know, belief systems out there and such that, you know, because oftentimes I see men associating that as a sexual act or, or sexuality or whatever it is to be that close to men in that way. Um, it's interesting when I've, I was with the uh, 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 Italian, you know, they're very affectionate. Oh, good to see your hands around. You know, they'll give you a kiss, even though know, and, and there's that affection in that in other countries, you know. And, and I remember um, going up to some other men from other countries too, and they, they immediately just grab my hand. They'll grab my hand and just, just hold my hand. It has nothing to do with any sexuality or anything like that, but that's just a way of showing that affection. And men, uh, we can show them the, the, that affection. I love the hungi with the, the Maori men where we just come up and we you know, touch foreheads and then we share breath, touch that forehead and then share breath, you know, that, that. but here in the United States, it's, you know, it's, there's such a, um, I don't know, man, it's just it, that thing, but it's about, um, I think a lot of men, we have this distorted view on what's on sexuality too. And I think men, we need to really learn about what true healthy relationships and, and healthy sexuality is, you know, and, not associated, you know, even just the fact, you know, so many things are associated with sex and sexuality, you know, in, in, in this country and even our media and this and that, you know, and so even those affections, you know, in the back of their minds, it's like, oh, I don't want to, I'm not that way, you know, type thing, you know. I, so I think one part of the healing of men is a healthy sexual um, uh, frame. You know, what is healthy sexuality? You know, with men and really you know, thinking about it, you know, teaching that. And that's part of the healing too, being open to that, being vulnerable as well. I mean, all those things we've talked about. I'm going to let Doug talk, but also I'll keep going. <laughs> I, so when I lived in Africa in my in my little village, um, I would, guys held hands. So we'd walk down the street holding hands. They, they'd always want to hold hands with me. So, but I quite honestly, I mean, I grew up in this, you know, in the United States. So I always felt a little weird because, um, and I always wondered why I'm like, what is my problem? You know, and the more I've been looking into this, because I, I really feel like this is really important because it, it really blocks men from getting together and like really sharing their true spirits with each other, this whole, this whole thing. And perhaps some of it stems from, it wasn't that long ago where um, homosexuality, men would actually be arrested and jailed and sometimes killed because, because they expressed that, their, their personal, you know, preferences. So we have that fear. I think we carry that. We carry some of the past in, inside of us. And, and I mean, me personally, I want people to be whatever sexuality they want. I'm totally fine with it and I'm comfortable with it. And I, and I feel like it clogs us up as men like to be so like, that's what happens if the alcohol probably like, you know, yeah, all yeah. their blinders and everything come down like, oh, and they're, they're really expressing like part of like, how they truly feel. Unfortunately, yeah, men are weird. So they can't do that during the, you know, normal times. Be- but some of that is their fear of being of like, oh, they're gonna think I'm gay or, you know, which is, yeah, if they're not, I mean, oh, they're going to get the wrong idea or something. Yeah. I know, exactly. And if somebody thinks I'm gay, I don't really care in, in, anymore. Um, but I still carry that stuff that I'm like, okay, how affectionate or, or can I be? You know, I tell my my friends I love them all the time. Like, man, I love you, brother. And 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 it feels great to be able to do that. <laughs> but I want to I bring up that point, too, uh, real quick, that... Um, even men, uh, oftentimes too, if they go and 
and give a woman a hug or, or, or whatever it is to, again, healthy sexuality, you know, and they associate it with, with uh, a possibility I could hook up with this person or, or, or this and that. It's like, no, man, we have such a distorted idea of what sexuality is as men in this country, you know, in the world, I would say, you know, that's just part of that, that healing of men we need to, you know, to address. Um, Naya, I just want to say we're, we've done run out of time. I know you have a whole list of questions. I know. And, <laughs> and, and, as, and we'll have to do a part two I, because, um, you know, and, and you know, it kind of scared me earlier when you said, oh yeah, all my friends, they were like saying, ask them this, ask them this, ask them this. And I was like, well, no, no. You know, and, but it's, it's awesome. And I think we, we do need to have a part two on this conversation with, you know, with um, you coming on and asking us more questions on this because we need to talk about these things. This has got to be a, a normal conversation. So, um, uh, because we have to get these things out and we have to step up and learn I mean, why do I do this stuff? Because I'm learning. I need to learn this stuff. I need to learn and grow as a human being, as a man, you know, and, and being a man shouldn't be hard, that hard in this world. You know, it, you know it's a, it, being a man should be a, a natural, you know, human thing. Um, and so um, I'd like to see um, um, another, a part two. You know, would you be willing to come on for part two, Naya? Yeah, if you'd have me, I'd love to. Abs I have so absolutely. many questions. <laughs> I, I guarantee you right now, my our sisters with the Native Waters Institute are like going, I need to talk to Naya, man. You know, they're, <laughs> they're going like, I need to, we need to bring her in. I need to talk to her. Hey, so everybody, um, again, my hands go up to you, Naya. I just want to say thank you for tuning in for just for this 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 moment. And that's all this is. It's a moment, and uh, we need to have more more moments like this. Whether with, with the Native Waters uh, Institute, Native Waters Power Hour, this is week twenty four. We're sponsored by the Urban Indian Health Institute, the Seattle Indian Health Board. Um, and we're here for opportunities to heal. How can we heal? And to keep our ancestral wisdoms alive and during this, this time. So I just wanna thank uh, Doug and Naya for coming on and, 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 and for this conversation. You got me thinking and, and uh, um, gosh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for this. Mm -hmm. So with that, we're gonna tune out for right now. Um, and so take care, have a great weekend, be well, be safe. And uh, how can you be a blessing, not only to others, but to yourself? Be gentle with yourself. And um, thank you. Until next time. Good night, Good night, everyone. Uh, Bye. Much love to everyone. Thank you.